What if I told you you don't actually need a bigger machine, you just need to be more efficient and free up your spindle time? And what if you could actually put one or two smaller, more affordable machines in the place of a larger machine and get more work out the door and make more money? What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're gonna be diving back into smaller machines and how we're using them to free up production, get more work out the door, and be more efficient. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as we've discussed over the last little while, we brought in this Track Machine Tools VMC2 uh, almost about a year ago. And when we originally brought it in, the intent was right across from me here, we have our uh, straight turning lathe. The original intent was to basically make it a partner machine for our straight turning lathe. So, you know, we have one live tooling lathe, but then we have a straight turning lathe. So it has no driven tools, can't do any cross holes, can't mill on flats. And at the time we brought this in, we were doing a ton of work that required those secondary operations after you turn apart. So milled features, milled flats, drill cross holes, off-center tap holes on the face, you know, that kind of work. And while that fits really well in a live tooling lathe, we had too much of it, too much of that kind of work. So we figured, hey, we're gonna put this right across from our straight turning lathe and essentially use it like the live spindle for a straight turning lathe because, you know, capability is capability and then maybe we can use it for other stuff too. You know, our straight turning lathe is still a very good piece of equipment. We're not really looking to switch that out for a live tooling lathe right now. So that was the original intent and we did use it a lot for that kind of partner stopgap work that way. Um, however, that work did kind of slow down. We switched, you know, we've talked about pivoting in industries. We pivoted a little bit at one point so we don't do as much of that anymore but we said hey we've got a great spindle right here beside our lathe and right here beside one of our bigger mills why don't we try it for some production stuff you know here at lakewood we do quite a few production jobs especially i want to call them lower value production jobs you know these are the tractor parts these are the electronics housing stuff that still makes money but we're not going to retire on it right it's not the prototype work it's not the rush work it's not the hugely accurate work that we need some of our really more expensive spindles for. So we said, all right, we're gonna give this a shot. We're gonna try setting this thing up for some production runs because it's a free spindle, small machine. Let's give it a shot. Usually when we do production, a lot of our production stuff is stuff that is under six inches. And you know, if you look at a standard, you know, a normal vise, a lot of them are six inches. A lot of them are kind of small parts. Like for instance, these ones right here, this is after first operation. I'll show them to you up there. This one hasn't been deburred, but you can see we do a lot of these. We got a big stack of 250 of them here. So typically what we do is we'd run these in a larger machine. You know, if you go back and you look at our shop tours, we've added a couple of machines since then, but you can see most of our machines are on the larger side when you compare it to something like the VMC2. You know, typically minimum 40 inch table all the way up to 60 inch table if we're talking about in the X. And that works really well for big stuff. It works well for small stuff if we're setting up multiple vices, or it works really well if we wanna do multiple ops or multiple you know, approaches that way. But at the end of the day, you know, especially on my biggest mill, it's an XT, it's got a huge travel in the Z, and it's got a lot of travel in the X, it's got a lot of travel in the Y. So when we're doing small parts, you know, some of them can be this big, not only are we kind of wasting that table to do that, what am I gonna do? Set up eight vices to run one part when it's a 30 second cycle, maybe. But because of the travels, it's taking a lot longer. The other thing we were noticing is, yeah, it's really good to run some of these small parts in those big machines, you know, it works, we've done it for years, but we'd be running a small part in that machine because we gotta get it out the door. All of a sudden we have bigger work come in that has to run on that machine and now it's waiting and now we're late or we're rushed because that machine that can only do that big stuff is currently tied up doing small stuff. So we decided all little, little stuff we're gonna put in this machine here right beside the lake. The other thing that we wanna talk about when we're talking about this machine is we've already kind of gone through how you can program conversational in the ProtoTrack RMX. 
works really well, good for tool room stuff. Um, we've programmed production stuff out of it, but I have all these CAM programs that we use on our other machines. We can take them and stick them directly in here without having to do much modification. You know, we just change the post and run them. So we're not having to start from zero. So realistically, yeah, if I can fit it in that machine, sure. But I can also take that program, repost it out, stick it in here and away we go. So we've been running production on this. It's been going very well. There are a couple considerations when you're using a smaller spindle that you wanna keep in mind. This machine runs a BT30 spindle. So compared to some of my larger machines that run 40 taper, this is a much, much smaller holder. The only real difference between running a BT30 and something like a 40 taper, you have to be mindful of the motor. This thing has really good speed. I think it's got a 10,000 RPM spindle, but it doesn't have the torque of something like a bigger mill. The only thing you have to really keep in mind when you're programming them is usually, you know, for these parts here, we would typically go in on a larger mill and do these two sides in two passes. So we go through, you know, rough it, finish it, move on. Instead with this one, all we do is we step it down. So instead of trying to, you know, really use the spindle power to get through that, we just take a lighter cut, step it down, hit a finish and away we go. Because it has those shorter travels and because it's got really fast rapids, the programs really aren't that much longer, even when you add all those other passes. Um, often we, we're a little overkill with adding passes. You can be a little more aggressive than this, but it works really, really well. The other advantage of having a machine like this are because of our space constraints here. If you go back and you watch our shop tour, you'll know that we have three kind of long skinny units in a row. We just kind of keep expanding that way. So it's almost like having a really long hallway that keeps going all the way around the shop. We don't have the ability to put a lot of big machines into a cell. It just doesn't work. We have smaller kind of cell-like areas, but we don't have the ability to put four machines facing each other with full-size machines. With smaller machines like this, not only do we have the cell here with the lathe, but with our big mill there, we can actually be running a bigger part there with a longer cycle and run a shorter cycle here because that guy typically doesn't have time to walk all the way out to the other machines or walk all the way over to there or walk all the way over to the lathe. Now he can run three machines or even two machines at the same time within you know, 15 feet. So all that kind of dead time that that operator would have usually, you know, either just deburring parts or sweeping the floor, we're essentially getting bonus time out of the spindle. And because this is a much more affordable machine than one of my larger machines, even if it sits for a little bit, you know, it doesn't feel like such a waste. Remember, spindle time utilization in this industry really is kind of the name of the game. The more that spindle is running, the more money you're gonna make. It's, it's kind of that simple in a lot of ways, you know. We can talk about efficiency, we can talk about this, that, and the other thing, but if that spindle ain't turning, we ain't earning. Get another spindle going, you're making more money. We've done a ton of production in this, so we've done electronics housings, We've done um, threading parts after they come out if they have a cross hole. We've done laser cut parts in here where we're adding a boss. We do parts like this. Basically the stuff where if it'll fit in this machine and I don't need to tie up a bigger machine, typically these days we're throwing it in here because it's just getting extra spindle time and it saves a lot of my bigger spindles for the higher value stuff. The other thing you should consider is that for the price of a bigger mill, you know, they may have a 60 inch table, you may be able to get two of these for the same price. Depends where you are, depends on your distributor. But you may be able to get two of these for the same price and fit them in a smaller footprint than that big machine. Now you've got two spindles that you didn't have before instead of one. It's really gonna depend on your capabilities. You know, if you only have small machines, maybe you don't want another small one. If you only have big machines, maybe you don't see a lot of use for this. But my advice is save your big machines for the big work, consider the smaller machines, for stuff that just doesn't need a 60 inch table. In any case, guys, I'd like to know in the comments below, are you guys running smaller machines? Have you considered it for your operation? Where do you think they fit in? You know, up until when we brought this in, I was concerned that we weren't gonna have anything small enough and you know, it was kind of a light bulb moment to see, oh, we do a ton of stuff like this. So if you're running them, let me know in the comments below, how do you use them? How do you get the best out of their spindles? What are considerations that we may not have thought of? And of course, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.